Hola, 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 novias and friends. We are in Barcelona with Cupra and we have the brand new Cupra Leon VZE Hybrid for you, a sports tourer. Come join us as we explore its remarkable features, performance, and what makes it stand out. Stefan, let's walk around the car a bit today. For once, we won't do that because sports tourer is just what one used to call a sportier family car that combines space with a sleek design. Combo. Exactly, and to me, I would say that it still feels much more reminiscent of a compact car, you know? And there you truly have a plug-in hybrid with 200 kilo of 272 HP of system power, and of course, corresponding trunk space and various usage options. So we want to see with you, does it have family suitability? What is its electric range? Does it fit? Can you do your daily drives purely electric and then have the combustion engine for long distance trips, which allows you to travel hybrid and make the most of both power sources available at all times? A station wagon segment is still within pure electro mobility. Room for further improvement, isn't it? Bienvenue, ami. And the available combinations there, they are often not always affordable either. That's why I think a Cooper Leon VZE hybrid with its starting price of around 50,000 euros is actually an excellent alternative where you can, I believe, effectively combine the traditional combustion engine world with the modern electric one. And so with that, welcome to yet another exciting new edition of Simply Electric. Check if you're with us and support us with a subscription so you don't miss interesting and informative videos tailored just for you. As always, we start from the outside, start from the front, take a look at the new front section. That's exactly where Cupra came up with this innovative shark nose idea. Write in the comments, does it really look like a shark nose to you? Or do you think it is just a clever marketing slogan? Share your thoughts and opinions with us. In any case, we have the Cupra logo very prominently displayed here, also in this copper color as we know it. And now you also have the additional optional feature to get matrix LED headlights for your vehicle. Here are the triangles with the daytime running lights. That's new too. And you'll keep finding these triangles all over this car. That's also kind of part of the new design language. Yeah, a station wagon doesn't have to be boring because a wagon can also be really high performance. For that, we need the appropriate rim to Stefan, which we have right here. They are nice in a satin mat with a slight sheen, which adds that Cupra touch all around, plus the optional high performance brake system that provides even better control which will then hopefully bite correctly as well. That's something we want to try out with you. Dimension, Stefan, got anything? I haven't found it yet. It should be 19 inches, probably 2.35s, yes. Yeah. That's how it was with the Leon sedan. I can give you a little spoiler on that. If you're saying, hey, it's not only about the money, I just want a cool car, then I definitely recommend these optional mirror caps because they enhance the look of the car and add a unique touch. They just look mega, mega chic, and there should actually be a tiny, delicate light copper thread included in them which would add an elegant touch. Yes, we have a beautiful mat here. It's a kind of blue turquoise. Can't think of the color right now, uh, but it looks, I think, very, very chic. Sometimes it looks more like a blah. Now in the sun, it seems a bit greenish. So this is definitely a cool color, Stefan, right? That looks really chic. So I like matte. And here at the rear, it's also a sports tourer. A station wagon doesn't have to be boring, especially if you attach a really nice and stylish rear spoiler here adding another sleek and aerodynamic rear wing spoiler right here. Is this really carbon here, huh? But you can get it optionally in carbon. Mm. Ah, very good. With the Leon sedan, the video comes before and after he had it, you remember? Correct. That was our concluding statement. Yes, what it also definitely has is the stunning new taillight design. We've got full LED technology and also in an exceptional three-dimensional look, which really sets it apart. Again, the triangles very, very beautifully showcased once more are definitely impressive. And the absolute highlight, Stefan, is probably the Cupra logo, right? Yeah, nicely lit. Lit up, it looks way better right away. And underneath again, C-U-P-R-A, which means Cupra in a copper note. And then if you go one level lower again, as it should be for a VZE hybrid, a small rear diffuser, and on the left and right, a suggested quad exhaust system, right? Yeah. Nice, but whether it really makes the right sound, I'm curious to see, you know, I think there used to be that five cylinder generation. I know it from Audi, I know it from Cupra. They had that really fierce snarling sound. And here it's something different. Let's see what it can do. Let yourselves be surprised. We'll first move on to the technical data. And the sports tour has really upped its game significantly. Namely back here, you see it at the rear a solid 26 centimeters. Remember the compact sedan, 4.39 meters, and the Sports Tourer, a good 4.65 meters, 1.79 meters wide, a good 1.40 meters high. So it's also really nice and low, and it actually has a wheelbase of 2.68 meters. The side mirror fits well with the width, so you should still be able to drive efficiently through the left lane, even in the construction zone. 
Of course, we also have a small tank here on board, but we really don't want to use it if we can avoid it, Stefan. Actually, no, because we want to drive electrically. Exactly, and the sports tourer, much like the sedan and also the Formentor, comes equipped with a battery pack mounted in the rear with a capacity of 25.8 kilowatt hours gross. So now let's have a conversation about the real capacity. You can actually draw a total of 19.7 kilowatt hours net from that, which means the car gets 70 to 100 kilometers of electric range, depending on driving style, behavior, conditions, urban, suburban, or highway driving. And that's actually very good. That means these everyday trips, you can do them completely electric with the car. Yes, perfect. And what's really worth it, especially when you're here in Barcelona with 30 degrees in the shade, is preconditioning. That means you can cool in the summer and in the winter you can also heat. That's obviously way, way cooler than with the combustion models. Yes, here on the driver's side, we now have the AC connection, three phase with alternating current at 11 kilowatts. That's quite a significant increase. It has very much more than tripled. Before it was 3.6 kilowatts, so you could charge the battery from empty to full in a good two and a half hours. Especially for people who maybe park on the street in a big city. This way, you're not blocking a charging station for too long. And for those who find it still too slow, there's now also the DC connection on board, 50 kilowatts at direct current charging stations, for example, at the supermarket. In just over half an hour, it should be fully charged again. That's truly great, so that, and this is precisely what Cooper absolutely wants. You use the electric drive much, much more extensively. And if you say, fully electric, I'm not there yet. I think this is an ideal transition car because you don't have a frunk like usual with electric cars, but a proper hood, and it's boiling hot out here from the beaming sun that's strong today. Ouch, that really hurts. And underneath, there are 130 kilo of 177 HP, a four-cylinder gasoline engine, turbocharged, which should also sound a bit gritty. Let's try that out together. And thus contributes 250 Newton meters to the system power, Stefan. What do you say about that? Yes, let's take it. It's nicely insulated too, but I'm really missing the hood vents here. Yes, it would be so, and if he had the hood vents, I wouldn't have hurt myself because I wouldn't have to hold the hood up for so long. Ah. It's incredibly hot. Touch no. it. No. It's really uncomfortable here in the sun. So let's close it up quickly and see how it sounds, all right? Three, two, one. Ah, full. Yes, let me explain that to you. So we have the auto engine with 130 kilowatts, and in between we have an electric motor with 85 kilowatt. 116 HP, which together provide the 200 kilowatt, 272 HP system output. 400 nanometers of torque, and then probably also accelerates from zero to 100 in a good seven seconds. And around 220, it is supposed to be also the limit on the highway as well. Behind it is a six-speed DSG dual clutch transmission, which should ensure powerful acceleration and fast gear changes. So you're prepared for any traffic situation, allowing you to drive with confidence and ease. Let's take a closer look at the rear section and see exactly what kind of load volume a sports tourer has. The sedan now offers 270 liters, and here we see a significant increase in the available cabin space. So where's the button, Stefan? Hey, look right. Yeah, over there. Oh, I saw that somewhere where someone had pressed it. That's awesome. Nicely integrated into the tail light. Mm. 470 liters, kind of a shame. Probably the battery pack is installed underneath. Well, um, the combustion engines here have 600 liters of trunk space. The floor is significantly lower and thus there is also more room. Yes, we always have to make compromises now and then in electromobility or in semi-electric areas, but at least Cupra has provided a decent through-loading option here, which many users find very useful and practical. That means long items, such as skis and snowboards in winter, can be very easily loaded through there. And what I also appreciate is that you can nicely pre-tension and fold down the 40% of the driver's side. The same should be possible with the 60% on the passenger side, so that we then, this probably won't go smoothly now because the center armrest is out and we'll need to adjust it carefully. So, and then you have the option here, I think of about 11, 1200 liters of space, letting you transport items quickly and efficiently, perfect for unexpected needs or last minute plans. Yeah, Stefan, that's pretty good already, right? Especially for families, this amount of space. Yeah. Definitely, you can dispose of much. And let me guess, what opens electrically? Closes electrically. Certainly. Additionally, you have the option to mount a roof rack on the sturdy roof rails for additional storage solutions. The load limit is 75 kilograms. In the sedan, we didn't know, no indication from Kubraten. Certainly for the sport tourer, there's a sturdy trailer hitch up to 1.7 tons braked at a 12% incline. That's really awesome, right? That's a lot. Well, there you can already get a trailer, a small sports boat, pull horses, manage garden waste, 
and you've got an 80 kilogram nose weight. So you can also mount a nice bike rack for cycling enthusiasts and take your electric pedal assist bicycles along for a truly relaxing and thoroughly enjoyable weekend cycling trip. Let's go get an e-bike, shall we? Because we do Nordic walking. Okay. Outside, we've shown you everything. Let's take a look inside. As always, we're doing the window check and here we also have single glazing. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a disadvantage. Many manufacturers also offer double glazing, two panes connected with a film. Door panels are always a topic in the Volkswagen group, but not at Cupra, because here I find it's done well. Here it's a bit soft and it foams nicely with good texture. Here, some plastic carefully painted in anthracite. On the door handle, it's shiny too. I must say it's genuinely and remarkably done. Can't complain about it. Sennheiser system optional, hear it later, check audio. And here once again, we have faux leather, but it is nicely finished with contrast stitching. Here again with a different color, matching up there in gray with copper tones. It all looks super fancy. And now we have this Armada, as you always say, Stefan, what's the word? Well, plastics, right? Exactly, but very, very high quality. Again, done with a grain, but it remains hard plastic material. That's the honest truth, I assure you. In here, nothing is laid in, no carpet, no felt, nothing at all. You can hear clattering and rustling in every corner. I'd say, come inside, let's take a look at the interior. Cupra aims to significantly improve and enhance the overall level of interior quality. Let's review it chronologically step by step with you. Unfortunately, we don't have a head up display installed in this specific model. I kind of wished for it. It's a practical feature, but in this vehicle class, it's only partially available. What's really nice is the big driver display. It's easy to read. You can use this in multiple different ways as well, including to show you all of the navigation data, to offer you with additional enhanced support in driving mode or just like here in a rugged tachometer look. Then we have a nice steering wheel, adjustable in height, distance, and angle, providing a custom driving experience that enhances comfort. Feels nice and grippy, good in the hand. Back here, we have paddle shifters. We'll try those out later. Have haptic buttons, that's really awesome. Start the engine, stop the engine here by button. We know that from Formula One. This is the Cupra button, the most important feature for all Cupra drivers. To quickly switch to Cupra mode, yes, the highlight is a 12.9 inch display in the center, providing a vibrant view, enhancing the driving experience. And your comments were gold again, because you rightly pointed out that these keypads here are still not backlit, despite our consistent feedback to the manufacturer. This is quite new now with it. Cupra has made that particular point very clear as well. That's quite cool. So you can actually see all the available options, even in the dark, which is very helpful. And we also have a nice panel here where we can always access the air conditioning and the climate menu be able to operate and also in the navigation area with the new software and system. You see this here, everything runs smooth and slick like an American electric car company. I have to say it's really awesome. By the way, that's Palma, right? Oh, great. We have to go to Mallorca this year, right? Absolutely. Palma, Palma de Mayo. Yes, indeed. Uh, yes, it is now. Yes, we have manual air vents here, which I think are nice with the hazard light switch, two USB-C ports, and yes, a wireless charging pad for a smartphone, as well as additional storage spaces for convenience. Maybe two could have fit in there, Stefan, right? Yeah, co-driver. Exactly. On the left and right, we actually still have some storage space to keep things. And here we basically have the gear selector, the key compartment. Here's another compartment, possibly for small change. And yes, auto hold function, electric parking brake, central locking. There are two cup holders, one deep and large, and the other one shallow and small. I don't know, why aren't two the same? Big and small cups, I don't know. Yes, we need to ask Cupra why that is. No, and then we have a nice compartment in the center armrest with a 12V socket. It could be really helpful and nice if you ever want to use a cooler or other electrical devices. Yeah, highlight, unless you're here in Barcelona with 30 degrees in the shade, but now we're complaining about the summer being too cold and wishing for warmer days. Yeah, in winter it's too cold. This is the superb optional panoramic sunroof and this impressive thing just doesn't seem to end. That goes way over your head. Extremely huge. And then you can easily open this part electronically with a single touch. That's clearly super, super awesome, wonderful to get the nice, nice, refreshing Spanish air into the car in the morning and evening, and maybe perhaps catch that final lovely little last bit of beautiful, warm sunlight. But I'd rather close it because it's really oppressively hot here today. Uh, a look through the passenger door gives you a nice view of the interior again. Positioned here is the DSG six-speed dual clutch transmission. So compared to electric vehicles, we also have fewer storage options available here. Yeah, we've got the racing seats installed here. They look super, super stylish. So there you have the opportunity, not only to have proper side support in the lumbar area, but also here with the thigh support. 
very, very nicely. And here, once again, are the openings for the shoulder strap, particularly when you take it to the racetrack, the integrated headrest. Nice shoulder pads, and there you are, really nice and snug, firmly in place. We want to try, are they comfortable? Are they good for long distances? That's always important. Last but not least, the glove compartment. Unfortunately, not lined in any way, missing a carpet, a bit of felt. It seems a bit too simple and down here, Stefan. Do you have something again? I'll call it Van Chic. Well, not quite. It's actually a little bit textured and all that. We don't want to roast Cupra here in this situation. Simply, I won't say plastic. But they could have added a bit of Alcantara, right? Yeah. Just missed it once. It'll be fine. Look here. See how nice Alcantara is, or as Cupra says, Dynamica. By the way, in Spanish, Alcantara is called Alcantara. So that's why I always wonder why some people make fun of it in the comments when I say Alcantara, right? Yeah. I get it. And that's in a car which was born in Barcelona, right? Right. Yep. And do not forget about our racing seats with Isofix. Got two things left. One's good, one's bad. Which one first? The bad one I know best. Now, the good ones are the doormats. I think they're <laughs> okay. really quite stylish. Okay. Made and also kind of nice. However, the bad news is you have a piece of plastic here at the entry point. And then look, you go up here. So look over here. Then you have the main lock specifically here. You're not coming. I'm driving on cobblestones. Yes, and boom, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, That's not yeah. quite right. Just soften it a bit or perhaps felt it gently to give it a smoother, more refined texture. I'm 1.85 meters tall, a light 99.9 .9 kilos, and I'm just going to slide casually into the back seat of the Cupra Leon. And even here in the back, I have plenty of room and significantly more headroom than in the sedan because the roof doesn't slant back in a coupe-like manner, but continues straight for quite a bit longer which makes the rear seating feel far more comfortable and spacious for everyone. So it's about approximately 26 centimeters in length. Yeah, the center armrest is very much the same as in the sedan version. Yeah, I need to rest my arm here, so I have a bit of extra padding for support. Otherwise, I'm sitting here with my elbow in the cup holder. I find that kind of uncool because they could have put the cup holder up front. Then you'd have a very, very nice comfort headrest here. Speaking of comfort, I've got plenty of space here. When the passenger seat is positioned to the B pillar, it's precisely like me all the way back, all the way down in my performance position. Then there's clearly a substantial bit less. Yes, it's tighter in there. And back here, they somehow forgot, just noticed if you already have such cool racing seats, you could use a bit more thigh support as well as some additional side bolstering for better stability. Yeah, back here, you don't really have much space. Because when you drive with four people and unleash those 200 kilowatt, mm -hmm. then things get serious. United, stand close. We also have three zone climate control. This means we can adjust it, have air vents and two USB-C ports. And yes, what I'm missing here is like some kind of small pocket, a storage option for the smartphone, the tablet, or maybe toys for the kids. We have what I forgot to mention earlier, three child isofix points, one on the front seat. Très chouette. Ensuite, conducteur et passager reviennent. This means that even families with three children at car seat age have the excellent option here to securely and safely fasten them with isofix. Yeah, what Cupra oddly does right here in the back is this kind of faux leather thing because nothing rattles here. Do you notice that? It feels relaxed here, yeah. So that means if you pad it a bit, it's really awesome because the car has the optional Airbags in the back seat, I firmly believe they cost around 400 euros extra. And I asked myself, why do I have to, in general, this doesn't only pertain to Cupra, but almost all manufacturers still pay extra for rear seat airbags. Yeah, it actually should be standard by now anyway, right? Imagine you have an accident, forget it, and then people get hurt from behind. You'll never be happy for the rest of your life. Everywhere you look now, security, security, safety. Yes, but nonetheless, down here, it continues with even more durable plastic, of course. However, you might be able to judge whether you find it good or bad. What's truly and undeniably cool is, of course, when the window blinds are lifted up. Now that I have a particularly lovely sunshade, the sun in the afternoon doesn't burn my head anymore at all. An expansive glass sunroof or perhaps a panoramic roof. Absolutely mm -hmm. nice, huh? Outside, we showed you everything. Inside, we showed you everything. Come on, hop in. Let's take the Cupra Leon VZ e-hybrid for a real and exciting test drive and see how it performs under various road conditions. Let's get started. First, check out the turning circle, since many of you use the car in cities where maneuverability is crucial. The Cupra Leon Sports Tourer likely has a turning circle between 1080 and 1120 meters, making it suitable for city driving and easy maneuvering. We got two data sheets and they show different values. So we assume it's around 11 meters. And it's genuinely so much fun to spin around Stefan just like a spinning top because he's really exceptionally nimble and razor sharp in every movement and it truly packs quite a mighty punch when you hit that pedal electrically. 
it's more enjoyable driving electric with a larger range Stefan right you can travel further and explore new places yes because this way you can really try out the handling in the corners and I have to say with certainty the Leon Sports Tourer handles it really nicely and efficiently well here too here you can effortlessly drive through the roundabout at 40 even 50 and that's actually a really cool thing because this is exactly why we definitely want to sit in a genuinely high performance car here that implies we've actually got a car right here which with sporty jeans and being quite rebellious in nature should be described accurately circling is quite rebellious isn't it oh you and just playing a little cut purse we want to simulate urbanity with you and this is the perfect moment you drive onto a supermarket parking lot and want to park the Cupra Leon Sport Tourer, enjoying the advanced parking assist features that make the process much smoother and less stressful. Of course, that's extremely convenient. On the one hand, you can use Park Assist. It has also detected a parking space, so you can basically let the car park itself for you. It's really nice too, Stefan, right? Yeah. It's also nice. Or here, old school with the rear view camera, nice and manual. Gotta say, backing into the spot works pretty well too. It's also reasonably detailed. And here you even have the option to get a 360 degree camera optionally. Since this vehicle is only equipped with the rear view camera, I think it's different for each of our unique subjects. As far as I know, there is also, at least in the Formentor, we showed it to you, the 360 degree variant. And that's how you're maximally flexible and you also get a good view around this car for better maneuverability and control on the roads. I must say, even when I look here, Cooper has done an extraordinarily impressive and excellent job overall. Please show me the C pillar from back here, Stefan. You can really get a very detailed and good view of it from there. Some make such incredibly wide C pillars, you can't see anything. And Cooper has also, I think, uh, cleverly solved this issue here in a, uh, in a very positive way. That is precisely what I find so brilliant about the plug-in hybrid. You have two worlds combined in one. You've got the combustion engine world for long distances if you don't want to deal with waiting times or are afraid of electric mobility. You've got the electric world where you can freely cruise Barcelona and its beautiful surroundings emission-free. It's an incredible experience, right? That's cool, right? And especially with the new increased range, the larger batteries, you're looking at 70 to 100 kilometers, I believe, so you're absolutely flexible for longer trips now. Yes. That's quite a bit. What distance does an average German travel in a day? I think about 30, 35 kilometers. Yeah. They calculated the average commute about 40 kilometers for the typical commuter. For some, it's obviously good if they can charge the car at home. But even those who can't recharge at home have very convenient recharging options. 2.5 hours AC or half an hour of DC. Then also always the possibility to do that in between while shopping. Yes, all possibilities. Many supermarket chains now offer it that you have a fast or semi-fast charger in the parking lot. Then you go shopping for half an hour, plug it in for 50 kilo off and off you go. Yes. We want to measure the interior noise at 50 km H with you. Sixty-three, sixty-four decibels. That's a decent value. For example, a VW ID3. It has interior noise at this speed, around 61 decibels. We're accelerating to 70 km h. Seventy, seventy-one decibels. That's really just a bit louder than expected, right? Yeah, definitely. That's a bit more. And we are driving at 100 km h. Maintains around 70, 71 decibels. Personally, I think that is completely okay. And then again, it really is quite appealing. Yes, that's fine. I switched to Cooper mode because the road got clearer and would like to now accelerate a bit with you all, my dear friends. You genuinely notice the impressive 200 kilobyte, the 272 horsepower, and it moves robustly, nimbly along, making a great powerful sound that really catches your attention too. Yeah. Nice, that sounds good. We want to test the assist systems with you, and we're driving through a sharp curve. Let's see how the travel pilot handles it in this semi-autonomous mode, making sure to observe its performance closely. Yes, it's indicating that we should take firm hold of the steering wheel. Here we have a capacitive control, which means just a light touch to signal it, so it knows we're paying attention and maintaining proper control of the vehicle at all times. Yes, our subject once again doesn't have the lane change assistant. It's a back and forth, and the Leon sedan, despite its features, has it. The Formenter doesn't have it, this one doesn't either. Maybe Cooper just hasn't yet activated it in this particular test model presented here. This semi-autonomous mode is, I think, useful and interesting for long drives, making the journey less tiring. 
Why is that interesting? Because it's predictive. It reduces speed on sharp turns, so you stay safer. For speed changes, it adjusts in advance. This enhances safety and ensures a smoother travel for drivers, making the driving experience more controlled and reliable overall. When the speed limit is removed and you can drive freely again, it resumes the previous speed set earlier, ensuring smooth driving. And so you are actually very, very well supported in the semi-autonomous area to also always to remain diligently within the correct speed range. And I have to say the system, it achieves that extremely reliably and almost flawlessly. Yes, it truly does. It works really, really well. He keeps the lines very, very well. He really does. He really, truly does. Let's discuss the ride comfort along with the travel comfort in the Leon Sports Tourer, a meticulously engineered vehicle designed for outstanding performance. And Stefan, what does your gut instinct tell you? Yeah, just like the other two colleagues, I'm very comfortable here now. So I'm signing all the racing sets that we have here this time around. With the thigh, it's good. Side support is good. Like I said, I'd love to try it on a long distance trip to see if it hurts. Yes, because they are, of course, comfortable with the padding, providing better support overall. And we also have a precisely tuned yet comfortable suspension here, which in my opinion provides excellent comfort on the highway, making long distance driving incredibly pleasant and enjoyable. Absolutely. You can really swim nicely here. Well, you can really feel the road and that's exactly what you want. So you get a bit of, let's say, a sort of miniature go-kart feeling right here. Wouldn't you compare that with the Mini Cooper feeling? The Mini Cooper might be tougher, especially older models. He's already more comfortably equipped here. However, it's still quite tight and cramped here. Yes, the space is limited. That's a bit tighter, but it's still a Mini. However, it's also necessary if you film outside now. We can simulate this environment here. Driving in a zigzag pattern here in our lane shows that the car handles well during quick bursts, demonstrating both stability and precision. It simply doesn't slowly build up at all, it just stays steady. The movements are quite very consistent throughout the entire duration. And that is important, especially if you ever come into a dangerous situation and need to quickly change lanes. Like here where it's clear now, then you won't skid or get into trouble. This safety helps drivers keep control, reducing the risk of accidents. And that's also the reason why here in Europe, I think the Germans also like it. They always prefer it a bit firmly comfortable, yeah. Sure, you kind of get the feeling that you have more direct control and all that, right? Because, you know, Asians or Americans have rocking horses. This is awful. They crashed softly. Watching them swing creeps me out. Think about the BYD CLU. We really knocked heads there. Oh, God, yeah. Yes, yes, that was really bad. I really love being here, especially when in Cooper mode, to accelerate so quickly. Don't you agree with me? And then he yells. But it's quite nice, right? Yeah, but... And it also has great power because I aim to try and convey to you in this video the sporty, the inherent genetic traits of the Cupra. It's really a remarkable car in so many ways that you can appreciate. This is not really a family wagon where you just drive from A to B in racing seats with flashy design, but you have the possibility to enjoy a driving experience that feels special with features that go beyond ordinary transportation. Probably even taking the sportive tourer out to cruise sportily over a small racetrack feeling every turn. Certainly we shall go ahead and do that properly. What I think is a hidden gem is the optional Sennheiser sound system, yeah. I think the surcharge is affordable, definitely worth treating yourself. When you have such a fitting song, a nice stretch while traveling, you just want a bit of beat, right? It enhances the experience. And that's fun. And what's also great, Stefan, go ahead and show it, is the ambient lighting here, nice in a copper color, matching the car. That looks really cool, right? Yeah. This looks exceptionally good. So I think we can quickly drive to the beautiful Costa Brava now, right? Yes. The outstanding beauty is when you drive through the urban environment, like we're doing here in this moment across Barcelona towards the harbor, you can drive completely emission free, nice and quiet. And also smoothly keep up with the flow of traffic here with the impressive 85 kilowatt of the electric motor. What I also find cool is the integration of Apple CarPlay here, wireless or wired, you can choose on the entire 12.9 inches. So you can use all functions and your apps mirrored from your phone here in the car. I think that completes the picture. Android Auto will of course also be available for all users of the Android version. So I think you have some options. Let's conclude with the Cupra Leon VZ e-hybrid as a wagon or better yet, sports tourer.
This vehicle offers a mix of efficiency and sportiness, making it ideal for those valuing both performance and practicality. We're inching our way through Barcelona city traffic. This is really crazy here, isn't it? Yeah. That's so whoever complains about traffic in Germany, I think, will be set straight here. The Sport Tourer is a great option for those who might have multiple hobbies that frequently require even more trunk space, who might have a family, and who might want to make more intensive and flexible use of the additional space available in such a versatile and practical type of car. The sedan is nice and crisp, compact, and the Sport Tourer, with its 25, 26 centimeters longer body and an overall spacious, more generously proportioned interior, might most certainly be perceived as the far more interesting option. You get a car with 200 kilo of 272 horsepower, which has plenty of power for its size and class, but even with the weight, despite being a plug-in hybrid at a solid 1.7 tons, I still find it good and sporty, especially with a good suspension tuning. You have the versatility, especially for families where dad or mom might want a bit of that racing seats feeling while still being able to comfortably accommodate the kids and ensure everyone enjoys the ride. And we have the luggage with us. Cupra somehow combines all of this really awesomely. Yeah. They really managed to pull off that balancing act. And of course, you can continue to bother us in the comments again with, yeah, rebellious performance just like that and we will certainly address your feedback. But that's just the way it is, right? It's also rebellious yeah. because there's nothing really wrong with the VW Passat, a well-known respected car. That's a fantastic car. Now someone lazily pushing his scooter across the street. My God, Sacramento, man, terrible, um, right? And if you want something bitter, you just buy a nice Skoda or a VW Passat, or if you want it a bit more dynamic, maybe a three series BMW, a Mercedes C-Class, those are really great cars, right? Perfect. But here you can get a feeling, don't you think, that captures your senses? Ah. Uh... Yeah, and I somehow have the feeling, and the sales figures back this up, that Cooper really has it, right? With each new model, it gets even more impressive, wouldn't you say? They did well. They positioned themselves well in the market, and they find their customers. That's why I would suggest, don't focus too much on gross list prices. Just visit a Cooper dealer of your choice. See if these jeans transfer to you with the car and check if there's a suitable leasing or financing offer where perhaps the gross list price gets somewhat more relativized and where you might, if you truly like it, potentially become an esteemed member of the ever-growing Cupra family. Hola, 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 brides and friends. So we've reached the conclusion of today's video with the Cupra Leon Sports Tourer as the VZE hybrid model. I hope the video has provided you with some useful and insightful information and helped you figure out if the car suits your specific needs. We'd love a thumbs up for the video and please check if you've subscribed to Einfach Elektrisch so you won't miss such informative and interesting videos in the future. We sincerely thank you for watching and say see you all again very soon as we continue to bring you the latest in automotive technology and electric vehicle trends. Stay tuned for more. You're Oli. Hey Stefan, it's kind of cool here with the illuminated Cupra logo even though it's not lit up right now. Don't you think it would look even better if it was actually glowing? Yeah. yeah that's really incredible. Honestly, they did a masterful job.